there have recently been some great updates to FL Studio, and it got me thinking about some of the more hidden or obscure features that I just wish someone had shown me sooner. I'm going to share a few of them in this video because they make using FL Studio so much easier, and whenever I film these videos, they tend to spark some ideas, creativity, or just solve a few problems for people. But if there's any great features you think I've completely missed, just let me know in the comments. So, let's get right into it. This one is essential when you're working with stereo audio, that might be doubled guitars, drums, vocals, synthesizers. This is going to let you edit it with a lot more precision. So the first thing I'm going to do is just boost this up so we can see it. This is a drum track. Let's take a listen. One more time. You can clearly hear the toms going from left to right, as well as a good stereo spread on the rest of those drums. But you'll probably notice every waveform in FL is displayed like this, with both the left and right summed together, and it makes precise editing quite tricky. Simple solution is a double left click, opens up the wrapper, right click on the waveform, right click multi-channel waveform view, and you'll see that it splits the signal into left and right. So there's no audible change, but the left signal is displayed on the top and the right signal below it. So left speaker, right speaker. If you were to cut out part of the sample, that could be a vocal, maybe you're doing a vocal stutter or glitch, or in this case, simply isolate one of those drum hits and maybe move it around a little bit. If I select this part that I've cut out and then undo everything, if I left click, you can see that that little edit remains because the clipboard doesn't care about the undo history. Previously, if I'd made a cut, I would have to cut something out and then usually try to add it back together a bit like this and combine them. And you're always wondering whether that's going to add up right, whether you should crossfade those or just delete the whole clip and add it back in. There's no need for doing any of that nonsense anymore because if you just cut out the section that you want, select it, undo all those cuts and you've still got your sample. So right now we've got the left and right tom. The next tip is isolating just one of those channels. So if I were to rename this and open up that multi-channel waveform view, we're just trying to get that one on the left. To do this, just open it up in the audio editor. So right click, edit in audio editor. Now you can see both of those drum hits on top of each other. That red trace is the left side and this blue or white trace is the right hand side. So what we can do is right click tools, and then convert the left or right channel to mono. In this case, I want just the left channel. So that's gonna remove that right signal entirely and then pan the left channel into the middle. Drag this out back into my playlist. Auto name this. I can shorten this a little bit, maybe add a fade at the end and then pan it back over to the left so it was where it was originally. Maybe I want to pitch it down and try to add it in to this drum fill just to change things up. So we've totally changed up that drum fill with an extra tom. If you're, of course, editing drums, you can isolate samples. But for vocals, say you've comped everything together, but the left hand backing vocals are too harsh or too dull, you could apply effects just to those. Or if you're working with synths or guitars, you could isolate just one side and apply effects independently. And it's these sorts of precise edits and this level of attention to detail that can often make the difference between a track sounding quite amateur or getting to a more professional level. And that's where today's sponsor comes in, Sound Gym. Sound Gym's my favorite ear training program. In short, it's a comprehensive solution for learning music production and improving your audio skills. Whether that's setting mixing effects, identifying problem frequencies, or even improving your drum programming. It's a bit like having a personal trainer for your ears that tracks your progress and helps you improve your weaknesses. But most importantly, the training games are personalized and scale, so as you develop, they also keep challenging you to improve. I've been using it before my mixing sessions, and it helps me work intuitively with confidence and much less guesswork. So if you want to start your ear training, you can use my link in the description to get 20% off, and you'll also be supporting the channel in the process. I also want to thank Sound Gym for supporting these free videos on YouTube. This one's great if you're learning music theory or you're working on remixes or cover songs. It's a brilliant way to generate ideas quickly. So if you go into the browser and go to library, now if the browser isn't open, you just drag open from the left of the screen here. Go to piano roll scripts and download text to chord progressions. It should just take one or two seconds. And with an instrument selected and the piano roll open, if you go to this menu here, tools, text to chord progression. You can just paste in any chord progression you've got here, whether you've got that for a remix or a cover song, select the length of the chords here, hit accept, and it's generated that 
fairly simple chord progression. From here, I definitely recommend experimenting a little bit, adding in more notes. Just making things a little bit more interesting. And then, to be honest, you could probably just replace the instrument, swap it out for something else. I have no idea why that opened up so big on the screen here, but if I just close that down, mm, let's maybe go for something, something arpeggiated. It's a little bit more interesting. Filter that down. And there's always the argument of why not just use music theory, generate this all by yourself. I don't know about you, but certainly when I was starting out, tools like this would have been really useful when studying from remixes and working on cover songs, just being able to generate chord progressions quickly and easily, studying them, learning from them, and then slowly being able to add more to it and eventually just doing it all by yourself. On to some much quicker tips now. Sometimes you've got a sample or a loop like this. Sounds great, but it's not fitting the tempo of the project. There's nothing on this sample to let me know the tempo. It does say 53, but it's not 53 beats per minute, I can tell you that. The quickest, easiest way to get the tempo of any sample is just to right click here, detect tempo, try to give it a little bit of a head start, but usually 75 to 150 is gonna cover almost everything. And then it's just gonna tell you what it is. Just ignore these decimal places. That's almost always wrong. Some sort of rounding error, I would assume. Let's try that. Perfect. So we've done the tempo, but what about the key of samples? Sometimes samples, especially 808s, are unmarked with a key, like this one here. Now many of you will be able to tell me what note that is, but if you can't, don't worry. You can just open it up here, right click, edit in pitch corrector. See here on the piano, it's just going to tell you exactly which note it is, in this case, C. And if it was on a different note, you've just got to look to the side of the piano and it'll show you which note it is. If you're working with chords, it becomes a little bit more interesting. Unfortunately, there's no automatic way to figure it out in FL Studio, but if you open up the mixer and you load the Wave Candy plugin, which is at the bottom here, you can copy all of these settings I've got. So spectrum, update, all of this, and then make the window a little bit bigger. And what you've got here is if I pause on any one chord, by pressing the middle button on the mouse, you can now make out which notes or harmonics are in here. So we can see there's a low C, G, C, E. I do wish there was a simple, you know, right click, detect chords. I'm sure that's only one or two updates away. This is for anyone who's recording an FL with a MIDI keyboard or MIDI drum pad. This is by far my favorite way to do it. Put the metronome on and press play in song or pattern mode, and then just spend a minute warming up, getting used to what you want to play. So I just usually outline the chords. I love playing with these Rhodes pianos. I find they're really easy to play and perform with. No matter what the genre is that I'm actually hoping to do. But the point is, spend a minute, just take the pressure off, practice, perform what you want to record. And if in that time you actually think, you know, I wish I'd recorded that, just go up to tools, score log to selected pattern and put the last two to 30 minutes into the piano roll. Everything I was just playing there has been recorded. You can just cut out this last section. Don't even worry too much about quantizing it perfectly and lining everything up. Keep some of that human feeling in the performance. It also works for performing MIDI drums, which is great when you're dealing with latency issues. You can just turn the metronome and the recording off, get the groove you want, and it's also recorded that in. And the next one sort of takes this a step further, which is instead of just recording MIDI all the time, something I've been doing in my productions for years is on the master track, I keep an Edison running and I'll show you what the setting is here on input for three minutes. And what this means is that it's always recording any audio going through the master track. So often if you're doing a recording session or anything experimental running through effects, sometimes you can capture something really cool or you can create something really cool and you might not be able to replicate it. But in that case, it's always been recorded on a loop. You could just grab a chunk, use this one here, navigate over to the playlist or whatever, and you can just drop that in and you've definitely saved that recording. And just to finish up the video, I've got a really quick but useful tip. If you're anything like me, the channel rack just gets loaded with stuff during a production or even a mixing session. It's very easy to group these and organize it so you can actually find what you're looking for. 
In this case, just select a few channels, then press Option or Alt G. Give it a name, so in this case, this will be a group of cello, and then all of that's been added to my cello group. If I go in here, you can see I've got one for the drums. You already get one for automation and audio, but this way you can just group things together. So if you want to work on your drum programming or the vocals, you can just select that group. And that's the only thing you have to look at on the channel rack when you're working on it. So that's all of them for today. But I want to say I learned most of these from friends on our community Discord server. So if you do want to join that, I've got a link to join that for free in the description down below. But thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.